Hello and welcome to Divi Coaching. In today's tutorial, we're going to be looking at settings in more detail. In the previous tutorial, we looked at the general menu at the top of each of the settings dialog boxes. Today, we're going to be delving a little bit deeper into the gear or the settings icon. It's a big subject, and in order to not make these tutorials run for too long, um, we're going to have to break this particular section down into several different tutorials. So today we're going to be focusing on the first tab, which is the content tab and everything that you find within that. We're going to be building this uh, background section here, which is made up from a load of different multi-layered backgrounds. So without any further ado, let's get into the tutorial. First thing we're going to do is add some content. And in order to do that, I'm going to go to the dashboard pages. I'm going to add a new page and I'm going to call that page home. And I'm going to click to use the Divi Builder. What I want to do is load some content that you'll be able to use if you want to follow along with this tutorial. So in order to do that, I'm going to load one of Divi's pre-made layouts. I'm not actually going to use the layout, though. If you do load a layout, it loads all of the media assets, so all of the images, and we can then delete the content, but we still have all the images available to use in our tutorial. So to do that, I'm going to click on Choose a pre-made layout. The one I'm going to go with is Fitness Coach, and the one I'm going to uh, load is the Fitness Coach landing page. And once I'm happy with that, uh, I need to make sure that I click on Use this layout, and it will then load it. And that loading process, as I said, will also involve uh, loading all of the assets. In other words, all of the images, and those will be available for us to use in the tutorial. So it takes a few moments to complete loading, but as soon as it does, the page will appear. And once the page has appeared, we're going to click on Publish. And as soon as the uh, publishing is complete, you'll see a little green tick. We can then come out of the Visual Builder and you'll see that this page has loaded. And it's also added the home page to the menu at the top. So here we are, we have our home page. Now, as I say, I don't want that. I just want all of the assets. So if we were to go over to the uh, media library, for example, you'll see that all of the images have been loaded and we can use those as we experiment with the builder. Next thing I'm going to do is come into the dashboard, come into uh, settings and reading, and I'm going to set the home page that we've just created as our home page. So your home page displays. At the moment, it's displaying the sample page, which is the default WordPress one. I'm going to select home page from the drop down menu here and click on save changes. And now when I come up to the top and hit visit site, it will bring up my home page. Now, as I say, I don't actually want to use all of these layouts, so I'm going to go into the Visual Builder. And I don't know if you remember from one of the earlier lessons, but if we go down to the toolbar at the bottom here, there's a little uh, trash can icon. And if we click on that and say yes, it will actually clear all of the content from the page. And now that we've done that, we can start to have a look at how things work. So I'm not going to insert a, uh, a row for now. What we're going to do is start to have a look at this little gear icon and we're going to look at it on the section. Now, if you remember from the previous tutorial, we, we went through the whole of this menu, including all of the uh, extended items on the little dot 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 menu at the end. Uh, but today the whole focus is going to be on this gear icon. Now you will see one of these everywhere. So if we add a row, for example, and in that row we add a text module, You can see that the row has a little gear icon and the text module also has a little gear icon. So the settings icon is one that is common to uh, everything in Divi. So it's common to sections, rows, columns and modules. But the different options that you get in that gear icon will vary according to the context of what you're looking at. So today, as I say, we're going to start by looking at the uh, gear icon for the section. Future tutorials are going to focus on individual modules and we'll go through all of the settings for each of the modules in the relevant tutorial. So let's have a look at this today. So we'll click on the icon here and what I'm going to do, uh, which I often do so that we can see what's going on, is I'm going to just temporarily add a little bit of a background colour. Let's go with a little light grey to the section so we can see what's going on. And actually, this row is distracting, so I'm just going to lose that as well. 
Right, so once we click on the section settings, you will see that at the top here, it says preset and there is a preset menu. I'm not going to go into presets today. In fact, I've made an entire preset uh, video tutorial which explains exactly how to use presets in Divi. So there's a link to that on the screen now. And I do suggest if you want to fully understand how presets work that you view that. In the top corner here, you will see some different settings for the layout of the builder. So if we click on this one, for example, it will expand the modal up to a large size, but that does tend to rather cover up everything that you're working on. So we'll shrink it back down again. And the next option is to pin the modal to the side. And again, that's quite a good way to work. But again, I, I quite like to have the palette floating. So I'm going to undo that. Again, you have a little dot 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 menu here, which gives you lots of um, options to copy and paste the section styles. Now we covered all of those because that menu is actually the same menu as you will see here. It's just another way of accessing it from the top of the pop-up modal. Underneath that, you will see three tabs, so content, design and advanced. And each of those tabs will give you access to different settings. Underneath that, you have search options. So you could, for example, type something like spacing in there and it will give you all of the settings that are available with the word spacing in them and note that that is not just from the, the first tab that is from any of these tabs so for example if we went with the word custom css uh, we would end up with the custom css section which is actually in the advanced tab the other thing you have here is an opportunity to filter so you can show only the styles that you've modified um, so as you can see, I've modified the background color and it shows me only the modified style. And in my case, that is the only style that I've changed. So this is a way to uh, modify or to filter to simplify what you're seeing. Underneath the uh, search bar and the filter, you will see the first uh, thing that we're going to have a look at, which is link. And what this allows us to do is set a link for the entire section. In other words, if you click anywhere on that section, it will take you to that link. You have two different ways of setting that. You can simply type a URL in here. So let's go to my website, divicoaching.com. And you then have another option, which is to target in the same window or in a new tab. Now, the reason you'd use in the same window is if you were taking your visitor to somewhere else on your website. So say you wanted to have a link that if they clicked on this section, it took you to a contact page. So you might have a great big banner on here saying contact. And if they clicked anywhere on that section, it would take you to that page. So in which case you probably would say in the same window. But in my case, because it's to my website, I'm actually going to say in a new tab. So that's one option. Let's save that save again, come out of the visual builder. And now what you'll find is that you have the little hand or link icon uh, all the way throughout the section. And if you click anywhere on the section, it will open a new tab. And in that tab, it will take you to my website. So that's option one. Let's come back into the visual builder again, back into the section settings. And the other option you have for a link URL is this little thing that, well, it actually looks like a, a database. That's what it is. It's looking like a disk drive from the 1960s in the corner here. And it is saying use dynamic content. And if you click on that, you will see that there are a number of different options. So current page link. So that will take you to the page that you're on. Author page link. If you have an author page set up, a home link a post link, a page link, a media link, and a project link. So the reason that you would use these rather than actually type the URL in is say you then copied that section and put it onto a load of different pages. So that means that if you did have this link on a page that wasn't your home page, it would always take you to the home page regardless of where you were. So dynamic data is something that is much more useful in things like posts and in other places within Divi. Uh, it just so happens that you can actually use that here. So let's say we want a home page link. It's as simple as clicking on that. We want it in the same window and we can just click on that to save. OK, so the next one we're going to look at is background. And this is the most complicated of the uh, settings sections on this first content tab. 
Once you get in here, you will see a range of different options across here. And you will also see, if you hover on background, you will see a range of different icons here as well. And we're going to run through all of those in turn. The first thing here is a background colour. So if you just want to set a solid background colour for your section, you can either click on one of the colours down here. You can click on this little icon to extend and give you a bigger range of colours. Or you can click in here and you can actually uh, choose a colour based on the palette. So you could put in a, um, so let's go with an orange, FF6600. That's an orange colour. And you can set your colour based on a hex code. So hex code, palette down here, extended palette there, going in here and just dragging around, uh, you know, all sorts of different options to set your background colour. If you want to add some transparency to it, you can use this slider on the right. So you've got two sliders here. One is the saturation of the colour, all the way from white to very saturated. And the second one is the transparency. So you can take this down to, say, 50%, and that would then show anything that was underneath uh, that particular section. Uh, there isn't anything in this case, but we'll have a look at how that works a little bit later on. So there we are. That's the first of these, background colour. Now, one thing that you'll find, uh, this is the first time that we're having a look at it, is you will see a little question mark next to the setting. And if you click on that little question mark, it will tell you what that setting does. So adjust the background style of this element by customising the background colour, gradient, image, video, pattern and mask. So very straightforward. And you will find that pretty much everywhere in all of the settings on the settings modal of Divi. And again, you click to make it disappear. The next one here is really, really important. And this is your responsive options. And if you click that, it will open up three little menus, desktop, tablet and phone. And many settings give you the opportunity to change what that setting is across the different responsive sizes. Now, you know, we can use it here. So if you wanted uh, orange on desktop, um, a lighter yellow colour on tablet and a light blue colour on phone, then you can do that. And if we save, exit the Visual Builder, you'll now find that as you scroll across, we go from the dark orange colour in the desktop size. As soon as it changes to the breakpoint for the tablet, you end up with this lighter colour. And as soon as it again changes to the breakpoint for the phone, it ends up with this blue colour. So that's a very simple example. Um, as I say, something that's more useful if you're doing something like changing a font size. But in this case, it's a good way to illustrate that it's possible to change background according to the different sizes. The next option across is a little mouse cursor, and that gives you a hover colour. So if you wanted to have a, a hover colour for the entire section, um, this is the desktop and this is the hover. So click on hover and then choose a different colour. So say we went to the light colour on hover. And again, if we save, come out of the builder, you'll now find that when you hover on this section, the colour changes. So that's another option that's available to you. So we've looked at the responsive options. We've looked at the hover options. And as before, the little ellipsis menu at the end gives you access to uh, a lot of the same things that we looked at in one of the previous lessons. The next tab across is a background gradient. And again, you will see all of these in um, rows, columns, modules, all the way across Divi. It's not just the sections. So learning it here, uh, as I say, is going to apply to pretty much everything in Divi. So let's go in with gradient. And if we click to add a new background gradient, what you're going to see is a choice of this blue colour at the top uh, with a gradual gradient all the way down to green at the bottom. Uh, the two colours are defined here on these gradient steps. The type of gradient is linear in this case, but you also have the option for a circular one. So it's starting with blue in the middle to green on the outside. You have, whoops, you have an elliptical one, which again is a big ellipse of colour changing in the bottom here. 
And finally, you have conical, which is a bit of a weird one that I've never used, but you're effectively on the on the top of a cone and it's blending the colour all the way around the cone. I've, I've, I've never really understood that one and I've never used it, but it's an option. So I'm going to go back to linear. Uh, the next setting here is the gradient direction. So it's 180 degrees here, which basically means it's horizontal. If we were to change that to 90 degrees, we'll find that the gradient is running from the left hand side of the screen to the right hand side of the screen. The next setting here is the gradient unit and we can choose all sorts of different units uh, and this will actually change the units up here. So at the moment we're going from 0% to 100% but we could change that unit to be viewport height and we'll now find it goes from 0 viewport height to 100 viewport height. And again, one of those things, you just need to play around with it to get it to do what you want. But I really find that using percent is easiest for everything. Uh, place gradient above background image. Uh, if we said yes to that, um, well, we'll have a look at that when we look at background images in a minute. So the next thing we can do is change the colours and we can change the gradient stops. So to change a colour, you just click on it. So let's change this to white. So we've now got a gradient running from blue on the left hand side all the way across to white on the right hand side. And it's an even and linear gradient all the way through from that naught to that 100. If we wanted that to be uh, more loaded towards one side or the other, so say we drag this white back, what will now happen is it will go from naught to say 50% and the transition will take place in that first half of the screen. So effectively, you've gone from uh, naught over here to 50% here, and you've gone through the full range that previously was going from naught to 100. Conversely, you can go the other way. So you can, whoops, conversely, you can go the other way. So we could say start the blue at 50%. and the entire transition, so it's solid blue all the way up to here, and then the transition from blue to white happens in this half of the display. And if you start moving both of these, so say we go to something like 70%, and we then also bring this back to 70%, you end up with a hard line. So they're both at 70%, so it's blue up to 70%, and it's white for the remaining 30%. And if you then start playing with the gradient direction as well, you can start creating some quite interesting effects. And, um, you know, you will see this used on websites. People put some text in here and they make an effect using that. So that is the gradient. So I'm going to remove this gradient here and I'm going to move on to the next one, which is background image. And that's pretty straightforward. So let's take an image like this one, for example, and we'll make that our background image. Now, the, the size of the uh, section is going to be based on the content that's inside it. So in this case, we've got um, some padding at the top and we've got some space for the row in the middle. If we want to see a little bit more of it, we can adjust our sizing. We'll cover this when we come on to the design tab later on. But for now, I'm just going to go into sizing and I'm going to increase the height of this to have a minimum height of 60 viewport heights. So that makes things a lot bigger. And that's still not quite enough, actually. Let's go with 80 viewport heights. There we are. So we've used a background image. And what we can also do is we can combine background images with uh, colors. So if we come back to the background color, and we add a background colour of, say, I don't know what this is going to look like, but let's go with this purple colour. And we then go back to the image. You'll see that there are some uh, background image blend modes here. So if we go to overlay, it will put that purple. Wow, that is quite bright. It will put that purple as an overlay to my background image. And uh, you can come in and you can start adjusting all sorts of things to end up with different effects, different colours, different levels of transparency. Um, you know, you can end up with all sorts of interesting effects here. And it doesn't just have to be a solid colour, as we had a little bit of a hint earlier on. If we had a background gradient, 
um, we can also use our gradient to come up with all sorts of interesting effects. And if we start playing around with our gradient stops, like we did earlier on, so let's, for example, make this white. Let's change the uh, angle to something like that. And let's make it a much tighter gradient. You can see that we have a different effect. And if we come into this white gradient and we reduce the transparency of it, we can start to see some of the original image remaining. There are all sorts of uh, wacky effects that you can create using a combination of gradients and images. OK, the next type of background. Let's get rid of the image. Get rid of the gradient. Next thing we can look at is background video. So there's a school of thought that you shouldn't really use background videos for an accessibility point of view, um, but you will still see them on websites and it's your choice whether you decide to use one or not. So in this particular case, I'm going to uh, add a video that I've loaded earlier on, which is a lens flare effect. So if we load that, you can see that we've got this nice lens flare effect coming from one side of the screen to the other. Uh, to make it uh, more interesting, you can start layering up these different backgrounds uh, in order to create some interesting effects. So the next thing along here is a background pattern. So if we come into background pattern, we can start adding, in this case, there's a dotty pattern. And you can see that that dotty pattern actually appears underneath my lens flare. I don't particularly like the dots very much, but there's a whole range of different things to look at. So let's go with this uh, wacky pattern here. And that looks quite interesting uh, underneath my video. A further layer that we can add is a background mask. And what this will do is it will uh, literally do that. It will apply a mask to the background. So the one by default it will apply is a funny sort of blobby thing, which I really don't like. Uh, one I like best is this um, pill, I think they call it, diagonal pills. And you have a few more settings down here of the, the colour of the mask and the aspect ratio. And I don't want this to stretch to fill, I want it to cover. So that's the effect that I'm looking for. And I don't want a white background, I want a nice blue background. So I'm going to click on here to get my nice blue background. And then again, I can make it slightly transparent as well. So by adding a little bit of transparency, you can see that I've now got the video, this lens flare effect running in the background. You can see I've got my pattern and I've now also got the mask on top of it. So quite a lot going on in the same place. Uh, you do need to experiment with these. Uh, some backgrounds you can combine with others and some you can't. So if I now decided, oh, let's try adding uh, an image as well. So let's add a background image. Let's add this trainer, fitness coach. I actually don't see it uh, because, just because of the way that Divi works. Now, that doesn't mean that we can't actually add it. And I'll show you how you can layer up images uh, in an even more sophisticated way. So all of the images that we've added in this particular case, so the video, the pattern uh, and the mask have all been added to the section. If I want to add my figure into the foreground, I can simply add the figure into the row instead. So let's come in with a new row. And um, in that row setting, I also have exactly the same background settings. So I can click on background, click on background image, and I can add our trainer in. And there she is. Now we need to sort the size out. So by default, a row will be sized for the content that's inside it. Um, so in this case, the row is literally just uh, has literally just enough space in it to accommodate the uh, padding at the top and bottom and the module that we haven't yet added. If we want to force this to be a different size, uh, we can come into the design tab and I'll be covering this uh, in the next tutorial when we look at the design tab in detail. I can come into sizing and I can force it um, to be, uh, in my case, I'm going to go with a minimum height of 80 viewport heights. And that's going to uh, make her fill up the screen a bit better. She's still a little bit too big. So I can uh, also fix that by going to the row background settings, uh, back into the image, and I can come down and say what I actually want to do is make her fit. So we'll go with fit. So here we are. So we've layered up a nice background now 
uh, which has given us a figure on one layer. You can see the background actually passes behind her. Uh, we have the background video, we have the background uh, pattern, uh, and we have the mask. We can now add some content. So to do that, I'm going to click on Enable Visual Builder. Now, a little bit of a quirk of Divi here, that if you now choose Build From Scratch, you will lose everything. And the reason it's giving us these three options is because I didn't add a module, uh, and in, in Divi terms, that is content. Uh, we can get away with that by going on um, Clone Existing Page. And then rather than actually selecting a page from uh, the Divi library, we can just click on this little close here, and we come back into our page. So what we're going to do is add some text. Now, I think she'd look better over on the right hand side with some text running down here on the left. So in order to do that, one of the other options I have in my row background is a choice of the background image position. Currently it's center, so she is centered in the row. Uh, I want her on the right hand side, so I'm going to come in here and I still want her center vertically, but I want her to the right, so I'm going to go with center right, and that's popped her over to the right hand side. I can now add a text module. I can pop a bit of copy in here, and we can now style that copy. So I'm actually going to make it an H1. So if we highlight it all and choose H1 here, it will turn it into an H1. And again, we'll go through all of this uh, when we come onto the text module in a future lesson. Uh, we can style it. So here's my H1. I'm going to make it white. I am going to make it quite a lot larger. I'm going to add some line spacing into it. So that's looking good. I want it over the left hand side. So in order to do that, I'm going to go into sizing and I'm going to change the width of that text module till it sits on the left hand side. So there we are. I'm going to save that. And I'm going to come out of the visual builder. So there we are. We've built that section. We've added uh, some text text module, we've added a video background, we've added a uh, pattern, we've added an image uh, as a background of the row rather than as a background of the section, uh, and we've added some text. Uh, oh, and we've also added a uh, mask to cut out the shape of our background. So all of that, really, we've only just looked at a couple of the options in the settings module. So there's a final one uh, before we close today's lesson. And again, if we come into the settings, the final one here is admin label, and that's pretty straightforward. So currently it's called section, and instead I'm going to call it trainer hero section and click the tick. What that now means is that if we go into the layers view, it's actually called trainer hero section. So it's a way of me labeling my content. And also if I were to go um, into the wireframe view of the builder. Again, it's called the trainer hero section. OK, so we've covered quite a lot today, um, but we've still actually only covered this first tab. There's lots more to cover in the design and the advanced tab. And in the next lesson, we'll be looking at this design tab in detail. And there's a lot to cover there. So today, as I say, we've looked at the uh, link the background and the admin label. Within background, we've looked at all the different types of background that are available and, and how they stack up. We've introduced ourselves to the concept of these little icons here, so the responsive option. And all of these backgrounds can be changed for each of the different breakpoints. So if you wanted a video, for example, in the uh, desktop size, you could go into the tablet and decide that you don't want the video in the tablet, and you can just simply delete it and you're left with the uh, other options. The builder sometimes doesn't um, uh, represent things 100% accurately. So what you need to do to be sure as to whether you've actually made the modification that you think you have is to uh, come out of the visual builder and see what it looks like after that. So you can see here that we still have the background video for the desktop version. But if I uh, move this down to the next breakpoint down, you can see that the, the video has disappeared. Um, and but because we still have the mask, that mask is applying itself to the background color and the background pattern. So not really the effect that we wanted, but it just shows you that it's possible to have different backgrounds according to the different breakpoints. 
Well, I hope you found this tutorial useful. If you haven't yet watched the other uh, three videos, I think there now are in the Divi Zero to Hero series, please do that. And also check out my channel, Divi Coaching, where you will find lots of other tutorials. Thank you very much, and I'll see you next time.